Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week we've got the Brocock Bantam Sniper HR on test, plus a roundup from the Midland Game Fair. But before that, we join Andy Watkins out hunting with the spring powered Wolther LGU. Come out here today, and uh, we're going to try and thin out a couple of corvids. Uh, the jackdaw numbers here are building up quite considerably. I knocked them back a bit in the winter, but they soon come back around. Uh, there's a few flying over now, but what my plan was to do was just to set up a decoy in the field and uh, and see if we can bring some down. Today I'm going to be shooting the Walther LGU out of the box. This is one of the best shooting guns I've used. Um, shoots like a, a tuned tuned gun under lever action, direct pellet feed into the barrel. Uh, on top I've got a PAO 10 by 56 uh, and that's held on with sports match mounts. You can see there's not a lot of clearance between the scope and the action, just how I like it. Uh, just means that the lower the, the scope is to the gun, uh, if you can't in it at all, the, the effects aren't quite as uh, pronounced as if you had the, the scope higher off the action. So I've got the hide in the bag, I'm going to go and set that up now, find a suitable place and just we're going to have to sit it out I think, the rain's coming in but we've got our coats in the bag so it should be alright. So Andy's hoping for corvids and he's opted to use a spring gun for a change. It should make for an interesting session. So there's nowhere that's really ideal. I wanted to be sat down when I took the shot, but I found this spot here and the car park's more to my left, so the cars aren't going to be uh, a problem there. And I'm stood up, so my shots are going to be going into the ground. I'm thinking of just hooking a hide net over these branches here, and then I can stand up, use this bean bag as a rifle rest, and just shoot towards that feeder. I'll put a pigeon decoy out. Only reason being is because usually there's always a pigeon feeding down here. So if any corvids are passing over and there's not a pigeon, they might get a little bit suspicious. But we'll just see how it goes. Um, I have no idea what the outcome of this will be. Here's a quick flashback to Andy's first shot, when a pigeon unexpectedly appeared while he was filming one of his lynx. we just finished filming that piece and I told James that a, a pigeon had just come in behind him. It was only about 25 yards, we both really slowly turned around. I grabbed the gun and just pile drive that pigeon straight through the crop and it just went straight down. Um, I'm going to go over there and pick that now. So that's what I used to set up as a decoy. But that does go to show that they're not really bothered if we're stood here under a bit of cover. I'm still going to put the hiding up because the more cover we have the better. But it's great to have one bird on the ground. Um, and the LGU just laser accurate on that shot. Hopefully it's a sign of things to come. Stone dead on the floor there. Great shot there, exactly where I aimed. Right in the crop. As Andy walks out to set up the shot pigeon as a decoy, another surprise opportunity crops up. Well, I was just starting to set up the hide and I looked behind me 
and in the field uh, just behind us there was a rabbit so stalked into it took it with a lovely headshot again only about 30 yards um, really good standing shot just from the fence back there so yeah happy with that one for the pot now let's get back and see if we can finally get some jackdaws or magpies the evening hasn't really gone to plan as yet but hopefully we'll be able to turn that around the shot rabbit is also used as an attractor set out in the field it should pull in a few scavenging corvids We've just put up a bit of a blind, it's not going to win any prizes, it might not even uh, let us shoot anything, but uh, we'll give it a go. Um, the pigeon's out there now, about 25 yards, so we're just going to stand here for a bit and wait. If nothing comes in, we'll change the plans and go for a stalk round. I'm hoping we'll have some action, but nothing's guaranteed when hunting. We've spent a bit of time here now, unfortunately nothing's coming, so pretty frustrating, but the sun's going down, so maybe there'll be some rabbits dotted around in the field, so all we can do now is adapt to our plan and go for a stalk round, because I think it's just going to get more counterproductive uh, wasting time here. Well, it's been really tricky this afternoon, we haven't had a lot of luck. Uh, we've finished up with a pigeon, a squirrel and a rabbit, so not the end of the world, but really not the best filming quality um, so I think we're going to have to come back another day and this will, this episode will have to be a two-parter uh, I mean the, the LGU's performed well let's just hope it can do just as good a job the next time and let's hope we can get a few more on camera but we're going to pack up the hide now Once again Andy's presented with another surprise shot but it's not an easy one so a pigeon just came in, bang on the zero, 25 yards. Uh, there was a, a V stick and his head was right in the middle. So I tried to thread the pellet through the middle for a, a head or a neck shot and pulled it one side of it, I think it was to the left and hit the, uh, hit the branch. So I think that's my cue to pack it in for the day. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm down on the farm again. I've had to come down again today because I just didn't have enough quality footage from the last session. And I'm down on my own today, so I'm going to be just using the tripod, setting it up before the shot, and then taking a shot because I don't have a cameraman with me, unfortunately. But that's all right. That's how we always used to make do, so I'm sure it'll be fine. I've just had a young pigeon straight off the bat, but I didn't turn the mic on, so it's not a good start. I'm going to have to dub some sound over the top of that. So do excuse that. Something that I've bought today that will hopefully help me out a little bit is my porter fort, let's say. Uh, it's just a hide chair. So I'm going to stick the hide chair out um, using this bit of uh, fence as cover. Might be able to use it as a rest somehow. I'm not entirely sure yet. And I'm just going to sit underneath a city tree, chuck a couple of decoys out and see what happens. Again, using the Walther LGU. No need to go over that again. Uh, let's get started. And here's that early pigeon, shot at the start of the session. That was the first pigeon of the day, a young one. There's quite a lot of young pigeons around. That's one on the ground. Let's see if we can bag ourselves some more. Well, I'm in the hide now. It's pretty cosy in here with the tripod and the camera and the gun and everything. But... I think we're pretty well concealed. The only th thing that's really showing is my face, but that'll soon disappear when I put my face mask on. Uh, the decoys are out. All we've got to do now is hope they do their job. The pigeon's coming now, and it's easily visible, there's nothing obstructing it, so if I miss this, I'm just going to pack up and go home. Luck has really been against Andy while filming this package, but this is a great chance for him to show off what the Walther LGU can do. 
and he nails it. Drop that one, no problem. Well, I'm starting to lose the light a little bit now, but in the last episode I showed you a little rabbit gutting trick. It went down quite well, so I've got another one for you now, for pigeons. Uh, I'm not going to claim to have invented this myself. I think I have I first learned it off another YouTube channel. But uh, all, you, all you do is, just, this basically is to get the breast off if you don't have your knife. Now I've always got my leatherman on me when I'm hunting, but if, if for any reason I didn't, this is how I'd breast my pigeon. So first you've got to dislocate the shoulders. I just pull them back and then put my thumb right in, in next to the bone and just push. And then you can feel it dislocating. Got a lot of congealed blood there. Hear that crack again. And then what you've got to do is feel under here, there's a, a, a line, a, a breastbone coming down there. And then when you get to the bottom, you just push your thumb right up underneath it. That breaks the skin. And then it's just a case of peeling that breastplate off that breastbone off like that doesn't look very nice now but it will do in a minute then you gotta get your thumbs in there and just twist twist that breastbone off it's a bit of a mess in here that'd be my shot placement again just other other side twist it off I'm trying not to get blood all over my new fleece and now you've got a lovely whole bit of breast meat now you can see, you can see it doesn't look very appetising at the minute, but I'm just going to do a bit of magic now. And just like that, you've got a nice clean breastbone. And you can either chuck that straight in the slow cooker, or you could, when you get home, cut the uh, cut the breast off and fry it up. But that just saves you bringing a whole carcass home and messing up the kitchen. Uh, and it's a little bit quicker than using the knife as well. So, hope you enjoyed the little tip. I better get back and tidy up the rest of my gear. It's been okay, we've had a couple. Uh, we had one yesterday, so three pigeons in a couple of days just goes to show that it's not every time I go out and have like ten and really big bags. It's just one of those things. A tough session for Andy there, but he still managed to deliver the goods with the Wolver LGU. Now it's the Air Gun Show News with a roundup from the Midland Game Fair. This is the Egg and Show News. Thousands of egg and shooters travelled to Western Park for the Midland Game Fair last weekend, where they had a chance to see and shoot some fantastic new kit. One piece of hardware to get a lot of attention was the new RP5 from Umarex. The CO2 powered gun features a neat quick fire system and will be available as a pistol and in a 9 foot pound compact rifle configuration. Hello, I'd like to introduce you to the RP5 by Umarex. Brand new pistol, due on the market, middle of November. RP5, CO2 fed, two 12 gram cylinders, go in and both emit the power at the same time. Available in 177 or 22 calibers, all barrels have a screw cut half inch UNF fitting, so a silencer can be fitted. The unique part about this gun is the pump action. Press this button in, cock, and reload. There's a five shot magazine which will take, as I say, 177 or 22 and reload for it each time you cock it. The AFO Ballistically Brilliant Chronograph, which we reviewed on the show a few weeks ago, was one of the big hits on the shooting party stand. The compact chronograph is affordable, accurate, and very easy to use. This is the so this Air Force One Ballistically Brilliant Compact Chronograph. It's been a huge success. It's small enough to put in your backpack or even in a, uh, a large pocket. You can use it anywhere because it's powered by a, a rechargeable battery, 
so you're not um, constrained by where and when you want to use it. It also doesn't need any additional uh, ambient, other than ambient lights, uh, to measure. You can record the time of your shot, the velocity, the humidity, and the temperature. Now, those last things are very important if you're shooting CO2 guns because they can vary enormously in foot power, I think, foot power energy, um, dependent upon those factors. There have been a huge hit at the show, 119.99, and uh, an optional uh, tripod, 15 pounds. The new Crossman DPMS M4 went down a storm with visitors to the ASI stand. It should be a big hit with shooters who like quick fire replicas with a tactical flavour. So it has a full metal bottle, the retractable stock, comes with an incredible rail system and flip up sights. We've made this uh, little silencer look uh, at the end. And then it comes with a magazine holding the um, uh, the, ca the cartridges. So let me just check that apart. Um, so here, here you can see you have the space for two CO2 capsules. And you have 25 rounds and then you shoot as fast as you, you can. With the nights drawing in, after dark hunting is coming to the fore and a lot of shooters were eager to take a look at the Armour Sight Spark Core on the Scott Country Stand. So this is the new Armour Sight Spark Core. Um, it's a handheld monocular. It's called Core Technology which is falls somewhere in between Gen 1 and Gen 2. So it's effectively a Gen 2 tube but it doesn't have a multi-channel plate so it can't be called a Gen 2 device but effectively gives you 70 lines per millimetre in terms of resolution. It can be used handheld or it can be attached to the back of your day scope using a conventional day scope adapter and it's good out to about 150 metres. It comes with a built-in short range infrared illuminator or it's got different adapter rails where you can attach a high power infrared illuminator like a wicked light which will give you up to a couple hundred metres. So Gen 2 performance for four. The BSA stand was busy as ever, with Ergon shooters keen to see the new Defiant bullpup. This year they could do more than just look at the BSA and Gamo Ergons on show, they could also shoot them under expert supervision on the new target range at the back of the stand. Uh, this year we have an integral range to the booth, uh, feedback's been really really good, people are enjoying themselves, enjoying the products, we've got some exploding targets and some fun things to shoot marked out every five yard distance between 10 to 45 yards. As ever, we hope to bring you reviews of the new gear unveiled at this year's Midland Game Fair very soon. That was the Egg and Show News. Brocock set a new standard for semi ballpup air guns when they added the Compato to their lineup, and the range soon grew to include the Bantam, a brilliant little air gun that I've been using for a couple of years now. Earlier this year, Brocock took the Bantam a stage further with the launch of the Sniper HR model, the subject of today's test. The biggest change with this model is the HR bit, and that stands for Humor Regulator. We'll talk a little bit more about the difference that makes later on, but I will say that Humor regs are recognised as being among the best in the world. The presence of the reg on this model is indicated by the twin manometer display on the side of the stock. But there's much more to this gun than just the new regulator, so let's give it a proper going over. You can see that the Bantam still looks very tactical, thanks to its tough, ambidextrous synthetic stock. The fore end is swept forward so you don't have to hold on to the bottle and it incorporates a Picatinny accessory rail. It also has stippled grooves on either side to improve grip. Moving back, there's a nice steep pistol grip. It sets you up very well for the trigger and also incorporates some stippling. The stock is of the thumb hole design and the cutaway is certainly large enough to accommodate big hands. Behind that is the cheek support, which is curved to create a very comfortable contact point. Its height is just about right for scope use, but the butt pad is also height adjustable so you can tweak it to achieve perfect alignment between eye and scope. The Sniper HR is still compact, measuring about 88 centimetres from end to end, and it's also fairly light. This is the 400cc metal buddy bottle version, which weighs about three and a half kilos. The highlight version, 
which features a carbon fibre bottle, costs a bit more, but it's even lighter. That said, this model feels good in the shoulder and is certainly light enough to carry around the field. Brocock air guns are brilliantly engineered and this one is no exception. I just can't find fault with it. I really like the flash free black finish of the metalwork and the chunky shroud that houses the choked Lother Wolther barrel really does look the business. This gun has a dovetail scope rail though a Picatinny version is available as an extra. You'll see that the rail is swept forwards. It needs to be because of the configuration of the gun's semi bullpup design. Behind the rail sits the 10 shot magazine at the heart of the Bantam's action and a single shot tray is also supplied. The magazine looks a lot like the one on my old Bantam and that one cycled thousands and thousands of shots without missing a single beat. Easy to load and slick in operation, it really is a very good magazine. The magazine is indexed by the stroke of the side bolt, which also cocks the gun and probes home the pellet. The Sniper HR features a bigger grooved bolt handle, which feels great in the hand and complements a very reliable mechanism to give fast and slick reloading. Great fun on the plinking range and very handy in the hunting field. There's a power adjuster dial in front of the bolt handle. On this gun, the three levels of power amount to around 7, 9 and 11 and a half foot-pounds. Personally, I can't see a great need to turn down the power on a sub 12 foot-pound air gun, although it could be pretty useful on high powered models. One thing I do like is that the stops on this dial are far more distinctive than on older models. The trigger was one of my favourite features on my old Bantam and this one is equally good. It's an adjustable two-stage unit and it's got a nice blade with a wide flat face and a gentle curve. Out of the box, this one has a distinctive first stage stop and a very crisp and predictable second stage break. There's a neat little paddle type safety catch in front of the trigger blade and you don't have to adjust your hold to use it. The gun is safe when it's across to the right and then you nudge it back over to the left when you're ready to shoot. Filling up with air couldn't be simpler. Pull out the magnetic dust cap and couple up the supplied connector and it's good to go. This gun is a 2-2 with a recommended field pressure of 200 bar and from that it returns more than 400 shots at 11.5 foot-pounds. The highlight version can do more than 500 shots per fill. The high shot count is partly down to the Humor regulator, which also gives fantastic shot-to-shot -shot consistency. This one gave a variation of just 4 feet per second over a string of 30 shots. That's a massive improvement on my old Bantam, which did have a distinct power curve. High power versions produce muzzle energy of up to 46 foot-pounds. Shot count will obviously be reduced, but you can still expect awesome consistency. I think that's all of the important features covered. Let's get on with the shooting. Well, that was good fun. One thing that I would say is that, despite this meaty looking shroud, this gun isn't dead quiet, and if I was going to use it for hunting, I probably would still fit a secondary silencer. However, it is extremely accurate. We've got fairly still conditions today. That was a five shot group, and it looked like some of them, and that's at 30 meters, it looked like some of those shots had actually gone through the same hole. So, in terms of accuracy, this is a very capable little air gun. 
This version of the Brocock Bantam Sniper HI costs £864, and I think that amounts to pretty good value for such a well-made British air rifle with so many great features. It's compact, it's got a fantastic multi-shot firing system and a very slick trigger. Plus, that humor regulator delivers a high shot count and blistering shot-to-shot -shot consistency. I can see this being a very popular air rifle. Look out for the new and improved Airgun Shooter magazine. Packed full of technique, gear and insight from some of the best shooters in the industry. Brand new look and free video content. Pick up your copy today in stores or online. That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, it's time you joined the organisation that works to promote and protect your sport.